Today I'm going to create the world's first levitating aquarium. You may have seen some videos online of people with these levitating house plants, and these look super cool as they are. But it got me thinking, what else could you levitate? A candle? A cup of coffee? A camera? Or what about an aquarium with real animals? For anybody who's not familiar with these products, the way they basically work is through electromagnets. Four magnetic coils in the base detect the position of the floating magnet above them. They then very quickly vary the output of their magnetic field to keep your levitating object perfectly centered between them in a very delicate balance. The main constraint with the levitating object is its weight. These magnets aren't known for being particularly strong, so they can't float anything that's too heavy. This is where our first of many problems comes in. Water is heavy, and so our aquarium can't be particularly large. In fact, after some experimenting with this levitating cup that came with this base, I found that the most weight it can handle is around 500 grams, or a little over one pound. It won't be possible to add any kind of water filtration, heating, or an airline for oxygen either, because I've got no idea how any of that would even be possible in this kind of setup and we don't have the capacity for the extra weight anyway. This narrows things down quite a lot, because there aren't many animals that can tolerate living in a small filthy environment. But anybody who's familiar with my channel knows there is one option which I think could work, and you might have heard of them too, a species of Anostraca called Artemia selena, better known as sea monkeys. These are a small prehistoric crustacean known for two things, being able to live in small bodies of water and not giving a flying f about how dirty that water is. I do have another concern about this project too, and it's not one I have any control over, a power cut. You see, these things need a constant power supply for those magnetic coils to keep our aquarium in suspension. So if the power cuts out, even for a split second, yeah. So this is obviously a huge risk, because it would mean a certain mass insta-kill for my entire sea monkey colony. But it's just a risk I'm going to have to take because potential animal abuse. All right, here's a quick refresher for anybody who doesn't quite know how sea monkeys work. They're a small aquatic crustacean that usually comes in a kit that includes a small plastic tank and the three packets needed for starting and feeding a sea monkey colony. Despite them being sold as toys, yes, sea monkeys really are living, breathing animals. They've just developed an unusual evolutionary adaptation that allows their eggs to remain in a dormant state called cryptobiosis for many years, and then incredibly still hatch once they're placed into warm, salty water. It's this little trick that allows them to survive for long periods of time on toy store shelves without any issues. So we've got our animals, now we just need a tank that's light enough to levitate. I had a bit of a look around online and found this animated pet fish. It's a kid's toy with two plastic fish that swim around the tank through the use of a rotating magnet in the base. It's not particularly interesting, but the plastic fishbowl that it comes with is perfect for this project. It fits perfectly on top of our levitating magnet too, and since it only holds 200 mils of water, the weight shouldn't be a problem. Let's get it set up. I'm a little worried about accidentally knocking the tank off the levitating magnet it sits on, so my initial idea here was to just glue them together, but then I had a better solution that would kill two birds with one stone. I want to add a little decor in here to make this aquarium more interesting for the sea monkeys as they swim around, and I realized that if I use a black sand substrate with iron oxide in it, the floating base and the tank will be firmly magnetized together. I have no idea if this magnetic polarity will impact the growing bodies of the sea monkeys in any way, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Next I'll carefully pour in 200 mils of distilled water as distilled water always works best for sea monkeys in my experience. I noticed that you can now see the black sand standing up on end because of the magnet. It looks all spiky, which is a really cool effect. Lastly, I'll add in some plastic bamboo plants for a bit of color. I'm keeping this really minimal because we don't have too much space and I don't want the tank getting too heavy either. And there we are, our aquarium is officially ready for its first residence. And now for the moment of truth to see if it floats. I'm quite happy with how this has come out. It's not particularly large, but it's more than big enough for a family of levitating sea monkeys to thrive. I have a quick question for you too. When I put the base of this levitating aquarium onto some kitchen scales, you can see that it weighs 600 grams. Now what do you think happens when I levitate the aquarium on top of the base? Will the weight on the scales increase or stay the same? 
Stick around to the end of the video to find out. Alright, let's get the sea monkeys into the tank. First up I need to add in packet number 1, the water purifier. This packet contains mostly salts, but there are also some sneaky sea monkey eggs mixed in there too. If you look closely after pouring them in, you can usually spot a few floating up at the water surface. Inside each of those little brown cysts is a baby sea monkey patiently waiting to emerge. We're supposed to wait another 24 hours now before adding in packet number 2, the instant live sea monkey eggs. So I'm going to keep the levitating aquarium on this windowsill while we wait. Indirect sunlight helps a lot with the hatching and growth of sea monkeys, so this will be a good spot for the tank to live. I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow to add in the next packet, and hopefully see our first baby sea monkeys swimming around the tank. Hey guys, it's been about 26 hours since the initial tank setup, and so far our aquarium hasn't fallen over, which is a good sign. I have noticed that this windowsill gets a little breezy though, which seems to spin the tank back and forth, and because there's no hard friction to slow it down, it just kind of keeps going. It's relaxing to watch though, so I don't really mind. I managed to find some solutions to a couple of those problems I mentioned earlier too. Obviously I can't use a submersible aquarium heater with this setup, but I realised that I can use a reptile heat lamp, and that's been doing a great job at keeping the tank warm. Getting an airline for oxygen in here was a little tricky too, but I had some rigid airline tubing lying around, and I figured out that it can be hung down into the tank from above, which works surprisingly well. Anyway, let's finally add in packet number 2. According to the instructions, after pouring this in, we should be able to see our first sea monkey babies. It actually takes 24 hours for them to hatch though, which is why they sneakily add in some eggs into that first packet. It's a bit cheeky, but pretty clever too. And if you look closely, you can see a few newly hatched sea monkeys swimming through the water in a jerky motion. They're so tiny at this stage, so it'll help if I put one under the microscope so you can get a proper look. This first stage is called a nauplius. They're only around 1mm long, but they'll grow much larger than this and change dramatically over the next few weeks. I'll get this guy back into the tank and give you an update on one month from now so you can see the levitating aquarium with a fully established colony. Hey guys, it's been a little over 4 weeks since our sea monkeys first hatched, and I'm glad to say that this little experiment has been a success. Luckily we didn't have any power cuts over the last month, so the levitating aquarium has stayed floating this whole time. There are somewhere around 12 adult sea monkeys in the tank now, and I've even noticed a few mating pairs and some newly born babies in the tank too. Oh, and it seems that the big magnets and all that spinning didn't seem to bother the sea monkeys one bit, as they appear as healthy as can be. Now that this experiment is coming to an end, I've decided to retire this aquarium and transfer the entire colony into a regular sea monkey tank, so they can live out the rest of their lives on solid ground, and also so I can stop stressing out about the levitating aquarium falling over. Oh yeah, and to answer that question about the weight on the scales, the base on its own weighs 600 grams, and the mini aquarium weighs 250, and when you place them both onto the scales, their weights simply add together. Pretty cool, huh? Let me know down in the comments if you got the answer to this one right, and I'll catch you in the next video.